This video is about equation conversions, specifically from polar to rectangular equations. So we're only going to be converting from polar to rectangular. We're not going to go rectangular back to polar. I want you to get this one thing down. So if we're going polar to rectangular, the goal then is to rewrite the equation in terms of x and y only. In essence, we're getting rid of the r and, and get rid, get rid of theta. Sometimes you have to get rid of both, sometimes it's one or the other. But you know you're finished when you have your equation in x and y terms. Okay? You're going to use the same relationships we used before. x equals r cosine theta, y equals r cosine theta. Tangent of theta is y over x. r squared is x squared plus y squared. So we're going to use <clears throat> what we know to get things in terms of x and y using these four strategies. So don't forget them. Have them handy. All right, for example, Number one, r equals two. Well, if I look at my four conversion thing, I know I have one that says r squared equals x squared plus y squared, right? Well, if r is two, and I plug that in right here, two squared is four. I now have an equation that just has x and y. I no longer have r or theta, so I have it down to a rectangular equation. You can give me your answer in this form, or if you wanted, you could move 4 over to the right-hand side and say x squared plus y squared minus 4 equals 0. Either one of these is acceptable. The bottom line is you've, you've taken out the radius and left it with x and y terms only. For example, 2. All you know is that theta is pi over 3. All right, so I would use the... the, the um, conversion that you know is tangent of theta equals y over x. All right, well, let's figure this out. What is the tangent of pi over 3? Hopefully, you remember the little trick I showed you where it's pi over 3's plus or minus the square root of 3's, pi over 4 angles, the tangent's plus or minus 1's, and if it's a pi over 6 angle, it's, pi, it's plus or minus the square root of 3 over 3. You need to know this conversion factor. So if, it, if the tangent at pi over 3 is going to be square root of 3, pi over 3 is in quadrant 1, so that means my tangent is positive. So I can replace this with square root of 3 equals y over x. All right, now I want to get it into an equation, like one straight line, no division if possible. So what I want to do is multiply both sides by x, to get x out of the denominator over here. So what I have left then is square root of 3 times x equals y. And that is my equation. That's going to work right there. It's in terms of x and y. No, you cannot leave it up like here where y over x, you need to go ahead and do that one more step where you multiply it by x to get it into one straight line equation. Okay, so number 3, r equals the secant of theta. Now, hold up. We don't have any conversions that include secant, but if you remember, what is secant? Well, secant is 1 over the cosine, right? We do have a conversion that says that x is the radius times the cosine of theta, don't we? So we need to get it to the x. So we need to convert our secant to cosine. So what I'm going to do is say r equals 1 over the cosine of theta. All right, great. We're still in a predicament. Well, look at your equation over here. It's r times the cosine. That's what x is, right? So if I just multiply both sides by cosine, over here on the right, the cosines are going to cancel. It's going to equal 1. Over here on the left, I'm going to have cosine of theta times r. Well, according to our conversion over here, r times cosine of theta is just x. So I can replace that with just x. So x equals 1. And you and I know that's an equation of a line. That will work. That's all you had to do. Example 4. r equals 3 sine of theta. All right? So different things to think about. We know that we have a conversion that says y equals r sine of theta. So we have the sine in there. We also know that r squared equals y squared plus x squared or x squared plus y squared, however you want to write it. So the first thing I want to do is um, 
I need to get it looking like this, where r times the sine of theta. I don't have an r over here on the right. So what I want to do is make that happen. And in order to do that, I have to do it to both sides. So r multiplied by r on both sides of your equation. So I'll have r squared equals 3r sine of theta. Now I come back over here. Well, I know r sine of theta is y. So I can replace that r sine theta with y. All right. Now I have r squared equals 3y. Not finished because there's still an r involved. Well, what is r squared? y squared plus x squared. So I'm going to replace it. y squared plus x squared equals 3y. All right. Almost there. I want to solve it for 0. So I'm just going to sub subtract 3y from both sides. What I'll end up with is y squared plus x squared minus 3y. And that's my final answer. It's now in terms of x's and y's. All the r's are gone. And we have a continuous equation. Okay? For class, I want you to try this one. Use the strategies that you know. Okay? You know that the tangent of theta is always the y over the x. Okay? They're just telling you what theta is. So start working it. Tangent of 3 pi over 4, figure what out, out what that is, and go from there. Get rid of the x's and thetas and solve it for y's and x's. Sorry, get rid of the r's and thetas, solve for y's and x's. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.